Good morning, Purse Snake. Good morning, friends. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's a beautiful. We woke up in the most beautiful place on earth. One of them. And the life is wonderful. I'm out here sitting around with Jazzy. Listening to a river. The Alamosa River. And looking at the mountains. It's, uh, I'm a little sleepy still. Yeah, we just woke up. It is 8. 53 a.m. Well, we slept late today. I woke up like this. <laughs> Last night we were taking pictures and we got some of the coolest looking pictures. Burst Nichols messing with some settings. And oh my gosh, insert photos now. That is so cool looking. It's some weird star picture. It's some weird setting for taking pictures of stars. I'm just hanging out, enjoying the morning, drinking some coffee. Amanda's over here making steak and eggs again. Steak and eggs again. We have some steaks from the meat man he gave us for saving his life, and <laughs> this sounds ridiculous. He hooked us up with a huge amount of steaks for really cheap. It was pretty awesome. Whoa, there's a crazy nest in that tree. Look at that tree. So yeah, steak and eggs for breakfast again, which is awesome to me. I could eat steak and eggs for every meal pretty much. I just rode my bike around the campground. I rode around the entire campground and then rode right back up into our campsite and Noodles like just tried to run run away from me as fast Noodles as she could. Had a heart attack. She like, yeah, she freaked out. It's a pretty sunny campground and then the clouds will go over the sun for a minute. It'll be cool and then the sun will come out and be warm. It's really like all moderate though. It's super nice. I think we might have parked on top of a chipmunk's home. Jazzy, what are you doing? Killing flies. So there's a lot of flies at this campground. More flies so than many. Amanda said they're landing on us, just like in those Save the Children videos. So guys, I actually did one of the number one things you're never supposed to do when you go camping or go in the wilderness. Really when you go in the wilderness, when you're away from other people. Now, I've seen a few humans out here, so it's not that big of a deal, but when we came out here, we're about 30 miles, 30 miles into a national forest. The last like little settlement area was about 10 miles back. And before we drove into this forest, I didn't text anybody or call anybody or let anybody know where I was going. Like my family and everyone on Instagram, last time they heard from me, we were still in Leadville or on the road from Leadville, and now I'm way down in South Colorado, far, far away from where everybody thinks I was. So if something were to happen, like, um, let's just say I didn't cross paths with anybody out here all day, and I had a flat, and I didn't have a spare, which none of that is, a, I have a, I have, don't have a flat and I do have a spare, but if I didn't cross paths with anybody all day, I would have to just, if I could walk 10 miles to the last place, and um, hope that there's, people there since it's like maybe their summer homes or I could make a big signal fire and hope somebody on the somebody else is out here that sees it like with black smoke I don't know what I burn a lot of green material so I burn all I'm saying is made one of the biggest mistakes you could make when you go out into the wilderness I didn't let anybody know where I was going so if something were to happen to me they wouldn't know where to send rescue it's an it's a it was really kind of a stupid thing for me to do. See, I'm an hour I'm an hour drive into the National Forest, so I'm not gonna drive an hour out and an hour back in today to go send a text of where I am. Maybe I should, but I'm not. It's a it's a, a long winding gravel road with lots of steep drop-offs on one side or the other. A couple times there are even drop-offs on both sides. I've also got my tarp hooked up in my van and stuff, so I don't really want to have to drive out of here to do anything until tomorrow when I leave. Anyway, just want to make a quick video and and tell you, if you're going out into the forest, let somebody know before you have no cell phone signal because I literally have an X next to my bars. What's up, homeboys? I know I look like a Jeep, but I'm not. It's just protecting my head from the sun. I got my hair done today. I put the little buns in it. It's my last day, making the most of it. But my head is burning. So. <laughs> That's what I feel like with this hat on. A log up there, I think we're gonna get it. <laughs> hey, turn it sideways, it'll roll. Free! I'm getting a slide down this free hill. Just like Bear Grylls. The dogs are just sniffing. It's sniffing. 
Oh, the smells. Whew, I'm winded. <laughs> that was so much fun. It is just gorgeous. We're enjoying every bit of it that we can, soaking it all in because we'll be back to the city in no time. There's our campsite way down there. What are you doing, Noodles? What are you doing? <laughs> She's super excited. What is it? Are you so excited? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as she started acting crazy, I, I started recording it. There, down there, is our campsite. There's Amanda walking the dogs. campsite down there. Jazzy probably just take cow poop, Amanda said. That's something that dogs do. I had uh, cows when I was a teenager. <laughs> what, right, huh? What yeah, first thing? We had cows when I was a teenager. <laughs> That's the most Texan sounding thing I think I've ever said. We had cows when I was a teenager. We had a dog that would try to get in the cow poop, so. Whew, it was a minefield out there. Full of patties. What a beautiful place for cows to poop. <laughs> Nice. Oh, that won't help you in a survival situation. Look at that. It's better than a diamond, y'all. We're going on a hike. It smells like Christmas. <laughs> Noodles, like, I'm out of here. This is dangerous. Jazzy loves it. Look at her. That light. Oh, she loves it. <laughs> wow. The beauty of this place is just indescribable. Hey, we found this cool mark. It says U.S. Geological Survey. It says $250 fine for disturbing the mark. Elevation above sea level 9,798 feet. Datum. 1920. They put this here in 1920. Do you imagine being one of the first explorers to find a place and just go out there and whack your way through nature? My goodness, people are still doing that. We have all of the ocean and all of space to do that. And there's still so much of the earth we haven't even discovered yet. <laughs> Where is that Bermuda Triangle? Where did all that stuff go to? We're gonna find it someday. <laughs> all right, we're back from our little hike. It's really cool. Anyway, we brought back a little pile of wood. I had a pretty little steep incline. You know, when you're walking down, you don't think about how it's gonna feel when you walk back up. But I feel like pumped. Yeah, like, like exercise. Yeah. Full on beautiful blue skies. A little bit of clouds, which are nice. Give you a little bit of respite from the sunshine. It is hot in the sun, even this high up. Usually when I come here, I don't real I don't notice any kind of allergies, but I don't come here in the summer. Yeah, There's a lot everywhere. of flowers. And then down by, something down by, there was a lot of them down in that little meadow by the river. 
Oh my goodness, it was so beautiful. So many beautiful little flowers. And the hummingbirds were flying around. I'm sorry I didn't film the hummingbirds. My hands were full of dogs and wood. <laughs> These bugs have been having a death match over this dog food. And they're still coming. More and more of them are coming to the Gladiator Arena. Escape. Escape. Escape while well, you can. I rescued the bugs from certain death. This stuff here is a type of moss. They call it old man's beard or some people have other names for stuff like this. But it's a really good tender. It's really great for helping you start a fire very easily. This dry stuff. I found a bundle of this just hanging out in the woods. So somebody gathered it up and left it behind. I didn't take all of it, just some of it. I'm gonna use it tonight in our fire to make it flame up real nice. There's all kinds of trails all over this campground. Wow, what a view. Now down there was like 9,400 something feet. I must, I must be a good 50 feet or more higher than that up here. I don't know if I can get any higher than this. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna carefully make my way back down. Hey guys, it's beginning to be dusk. It's on its way. It's our last day. Tomorrow morning we're gonna wake up bright and early and drive back to Texas. It's been a really, really awesome time. Everything's been great with these last two days deep in this forest. It's actually been one of the I looked on the life. Just being here has been one of the greatest experiences of my life in, in this view. We're actually sitting out. Oh, I've got a white line for where my sunglasses go. You see it? <laughs> I guess I got a little bit of sun because I have a white line where my sunglasses go. We're actually sitting out in the rain. And as soon as it came, it went. It's coming and going. There's no thunder, so we don't feel like we need to like retreat into the van. We're under the tarp. There's been a hummingbird just hanging out around our camp here and there. It'll just buzz up and then buzz off. I don't know what it wants. Um, not, not a lot of people come up here and stay here. In our two days here, today some people parked here and, and went and fished in the river all day and then left. Um, we've had a lot of people that use the four-wheelers or Jeeps higher up than this come down and use the restroom here. And then the sheriff drove through once and waved at us, but that's all we've really seen. Really uninhabited area. Well, uninhabited is not the right. It's a really low traffic area of the mountains, so it's really it's fun for me. It's it's really peaceful here. The wildlife is just walking right through the camp. Yeah, we've seen we've seen deer. Oh oh! Last night, Jazzy kept watching for the chipmunks and mice, and then she started looking out a different direction, and I shined my light out there real big, and I could see some eyes. I have some bright lights that I bought for filming um, that are battery powered. So I turned it up on high and I could see some eyes and then it disappeared and I see some eyes again. But finally it stood up and, and walked and you could see there's a mountain lion. the cat I just saw its eyes and its eyes were I mean it seemed like they were a little bit wider set than mine glowing yellow eyes and so we put the dogs in the van right away and then Bersig was shining the light out there uh, right out right out there shining the light out there and uh, he could see its body but while he was doing that I went and banged on the Coleman stove and I was like yeah get on out of here this is a this is old man Texan noise for running off animals. I no, learned no, it from no. my grandpa, and it works every dang time. Get on, you get on, my grandpa would just go to, to run things off. 
<laughs> like I say, shoot. Not you, dogs. My grandpa would go, yeah. <laughs> you all get on out of here. You all get on out of here. You all get on out of here. So I'm hoping to come back to this, maybe even this exact spot, like in a month or two. It's amazing. If it gets late, if it gets fall, I'm gonna have to rethink where I stay. Amanda thinks it looks like Skyrim out here. This is the Skyrim country. Apparently there's over, we didn't see any, we didn't find any, but apparently there's over 200 abandoned mines in this area. Um, we were literally sitting in the town of Stunner that was abandoned by 1912, I think they said. The cows came home and the dogs flipped out. I didn't really want them to scare the cows too bad. Yeah. Check them out. Happiest cows in the world. Just roaming free by the Alamosa River, enjoying life. There's a deer. Oh, how cute. Leap, leap, leap. Leap. Oh. Smoke. <laughs>